Good morning. Welcome to the first event in the 2020 Masterclass series hosted by the orchestra's program of the Kawartha Youth Orchestra. We respectfully acknowledge that Kawartha Youth Orchestra operates virtually and in person in the region covered by the Treaty 20 Mishisagig territory and in the traditional territory of the Mishisagig and Chippewa nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty First Nations. The KYO respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain this responsibility to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. We are all treaty people. We recognize the unique history, culture, and traditions of the many indigenous and settler peoples with whom we share this time and space. We give thanks to our neighbors from all communities for their contributions as we strengthen ties, serve our populations, and responsibly honor all our relations. We are broadcasting this morning from our rehearsal home at All Saints Anglican Parish Church in downtown Peterborough, Ontario. I am Maggie Goldsmith, president of the Kawartha Youth Orchestra. My colleague, Anne Millen, orchestra education and outreach coordinator, and I will be moderating the class and handling the chat feed this morning. Please use the chat to submit your questions for our clinician. The Kawartha Youth Orchestra has been delivering orchestral training for young people ages 8 to 28 years and public performances since 2002. Beginning in March 2020, our programs moved to digital platforms. This is our first live streamed event. It is made possible by grants from the Emergency Community Support Fund, uh, received through Community Foundations of Greater Peterborough and United Way of Peterborough and District, the City of Peterborough, and special event sponsor Long and McQuaid. Today's event is free and meets our ongoing commitment to fostering educational opportunities for our musicians and the community at large. Donations to the KYO are gratefully received and can be made by visiting our website at www.thekyo.org. Participating musicians are Teresa Fair, Ariana Klusterman, Isaac Lomas, and Katerina Thompson. Collaborative pianists are Rose Loranger, Eva Swoboda, and Douglas Shaleen. It is my great pleasure to introduce our clinician, Marie Berard, concertmaster of the Canadian Opera Company Orchestra. Ms. Berard is a sought after chamber musician, soloist, recording artist, and teacher. She is highly regarded as an interpreter of contemporary music. Ms. Berard is also a regular performer at numerous chamber music festivals. She is on faculty at the Glen Gould School and plays a 1767 Pietro Landolfi violin. We are very pleased to welcome Marie to, in our masterclass today. Hi, how are you? Ready to play some violin? Excellent. Could I have the sheet of uh, the performers in the... Sorry, I thought I had it. Somehow. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 
very much. It was really nice preparation you did on this concerto. Um, I see, you know, you have really a very nice bow hand, like you're all set up really good to go. Um, your arm, however, is, is still quite stiff, and that makes it difficult for you to really push out the sound. You know, when we play in a church like this, it's so large that person there at, by the door has to hear you when you play even, even a piano, right? So in order for them to hear that, you have to not necessarily play louder, but make sure that your sound projects. And for that, your arm must be free. It's a little bit like if you were throwing a baseball. And if you throw it, you know, where your arm is really nice and free, it's going to go far. But if, you, if you're all tight, it's going to hit that computer there, <laughs> right? So there's something really important I'm sure your teacher talks to you about, but it's very vital for you to try to feel some, some freedom in your arm. Can you, can you do this for me just without your holding your bow? Yeah, just like just maybe as a... Uh, what is that, counterclockwise? <laughs> no, clockwise. Yeah, yeah, feel the swing. Oh, yeah, in here, you feel that? Yeah, that, isn't that liberating? Like, it just, you feel that. So can you try um, even, uh, right? Good, good. Now, it, make sure you stay loose with your your bow, bow hand, right? So I have a feeling you're going to tell me when I lift the bow off the string, I'm afraid that I'm going to drop it, therefore I, I grip it, right? Do you feel that way? You know that that's not, in fact, the truth, right? You have to trust that you won't drop your bow if you actually hold it here with these two fingers and just in a relaxed way, right? So the, you can lift the bow by uh, trying to feel a little bit of weight going into your pinky. Have you ever done that? Do you want to try? So when you lift it, the, your, the weight of the bow goes into the pinky. You feel it? Like, just nice and relaxed. Make sure you're all pliable, especially these guys. Yes, the very important knuckles. That must be, that's your wrist. These guys. Right, these knuckles here? Can you fold them up and down? <laughs> yeah, those, those knuckles need to be flexible, right? So the, you can start to, to learn to change the bow a little bit more smoothly. So we have Grazioso here, right? He um, really writes in a kind of dance-like manner, right? So. The, You could play a little bit more enjoying the lilt of the music, right? And then we, when we have... Right? Very contrasting, right? Can you try this fortissimo part from, from here? Now let's try to see if we can get you to do that on your down bows with, with your arm to really pull out the sound, right? Okay, good. Now, right? So just pull out the sound to the end of the, of the church over there. Just, yeah, and go right to the frog, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And keep trying it to, to feel the freedom of your arm. Okay, can you uh, grow a little bit on it? Yeah, nice. So, and now let's keep going. Right? Yeah, make make sure you remember to pull. Right? Yeah. So that's half pulling. <laughs> You're at fifty percent. Try a hundred. And really pull the sound, yeah. 
You know how the bone naturally has a decay, right? Because it's heavier here. So that's the natural thing. Now you have to fight this natural thing in to serve the music sometimes, right? So, so it's the opposite. It's as if you you did it on an up bow, it would the sound would grow. Now you have to do it on the down bow as well. Yeah, yeah, and keep pushing, like just contact with the string right and really pull it out. Oh, nice. Okay, let's try it. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> Okay, now you have some dots on here, right? Uh, maybe you haven't quite learned to lift the bow at the frog, but you can still play a little bit short. Right, because that's not the melody, that's more the, the, the in a part of the accompaniment and also like a little bit of foot stomping there, right? So, right, so that could be a little rougher in a way. Keep going. Okay, good. Um, so between that, which was grazioso, then in your second theme, you have es espressione e tranquillo, right? So expressive and tranquil. So... So can you try to really give give us the feeling like we were feeling quite joyous, you know, before when you play a kind of dance and now we're a little bit more thinking of maybe something a bit sad. Okay, good. So if you if you're trying to make a phrase, you you would go all the way to Right, so if you build your phrase, and you sustain a bit. Right. Okay, so right now I hear a little bit. Right, so that's kind of without phrasing. Now let's try it. In order to do some phrasing, you might have to change how much bow you use. Yes? So let's say I use this much bow. Right? And then. And then I start to use a little bit more to fill out the sound. Can you try to do that? Okay, so let's let's try the second part of the phrase, which would be. Can you try to do that to make the sound grow? Okay, you you got there. Good. So now let's try the whole phrase like that and um, try to be. Uh, uh, the expression is there, right, in that, that leap up to the, the E. And grow and grow and grow. Yeah. Yeah, now keep going. <laughs> Good. So you have tenuto in this bar, right? 
which I think from this composer means to actually broaden the, the rhythm so that you hold each note a little bit, right? Can you try to do that? So Yeah, but you could slow down a little bit, right? That's he's using tenudo to mean like broaden the tempo, not just the notes, right? So the Then another grazioso. So one more time from the, the broad bar. Yeah, a little bit. In. Yeah. Now wa watch your intonation in that bar. It's, it's difficult because it's open position, right? But Good, let's keep going. Okay, so do you, do you feel this kind of thing? If you were listening to this piece, you would, right? You have to express that in your playing. So you have to do a little bit. Right, so that. A little bit of this lilt. Okay, right now I hear the. Right, so the difference is would be. You add a little speed to your dumbbells, okay? Can you try to do that? Yeah, so speed up the bow a little bit. Okay, so look at your bow. Can you do it just on the open string without your left hand? So you just, you just speed up the bow a little bit. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was sped up only in the middle, like just. Uh, yeah, so you start slow and you speed it up a little bit. Nice, so can you try that? Oh, oh, you forgot. <laughs> Pull the bow a little faster. Can you try to get, get to here? To the tip. Yeah, look, look at your bow and try to get to the tip. Yeah, and turn. Good, let's, let's try to put it all together. separate bows for now. Just that bar. Yeah, not in tempo. Yeah, and so practice that a few times. Faster. Okay, now try it slurred. Maybe it'll get a little bit more even. Yeah, it's better. Right? So sometimes when you're when you have a problem with evenness of a passage, if it's slurred, you practice it separate bows. And vice versa. If if it's separate bows, doing some slurs, doing some rhythms and that sort of thing. It helps our fingers just get organized and have a little discipline. Okay, so then we have... Sorry. So do you see how there's some shape in there that's kind of nice to pull out, right? So you don't have to necessarily, necessarily play... like that, right? You can just 
actually go with the shapes of the notes, right? So, do you understand? You want to try that? Okay, so. Yeah. Let's hear it with, with your pianist, maybe from there until, until the end, and try to really do the shapes, right? You have to, you've set up like a big question. We have no idea what you're going to answer with. And so you should be like, it's a little ha ha moment. We didn't expect it, right? So, and then take your time. Okay, so you can take a little time to make it more suspenseful. So can you play from the chord? of those chords, right? Can you try just without the piano for now? And listen to the intonation? So your B? Well, now the G is out of tune. Okay, and the next one. Okay, that's better. So your B was really a little bit out, right? Now how about you lift, lift your arm. And then to finish, you have to give your pianist the end of the, of the note as well. And it should be a little bit, um, you know, like be proud of, of the ending, right? So... And you try to do that with your arm. Really lift and make a big round circle. Okay, that, watch your, your low B. Right, it gets really sharp. Okay, so let's do it without the left hand. Right, so then lift and, and make a circle. Oh, like right now you come back this way I'd like you to come back this way come back so play the chord and then make a circle big 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 circle okay that's a, a mini circle can you do it in the air just without playing just yeah that's a tiny little circle how about a big one Ah, yes. And feel, you feel this? Free, 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 so that your sound can go, right? Okay. Now circle, yeah. Good. Okay, and then at the end, just really pull the bow and then uh, indicate the end. Yeah, good. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Thank it was really nice. Nice preparation. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so if there are some questions in the chat right now, there, there aren't. Okay. We're going to proceed with Ariana. Okay. 
it's really nice to be in a church like this when you get to experience what it is that we work our whole lives to do, right? Which is to project our sound, but the church helps so much. It's really lovely to... It goes on for so long. You're lucky to get to rehearse in here. Yeah. You put the orchestra all, all up here? No, in the other room. Oh, in, the, in another room, okay. All right, a little Bach this morning. Um, I will be playing Concerto by, in A minor by Bach.
go. Okay. So you made a mistake in the last bar. Your whole audience, myself included, we don't really mind, you know? You played like lots of beautiful shapes and you did a good job in your preparation. Don't let that affect you. We all make mistakes. We all wish we didn't make mistakes, but you have to just go with the flow, right? And, and just keep going. Um, okay, so I'd like to do something with you that has to do, I think, with your practicing. I get a feeling that you have the ability to have very secure intonation because your, you see, your ear seems very good. However, you don't always play in tune. And I think that has to do with, with your preparation at home, your practicing, the way in which you practice. It's, I often talk to my own students about that because week to week I recognize if they've just been playing their piece, play, 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 or if they've actually practiced, which is a very different thing. Right? We, we have to play, especially closer to the performance. But when you're learning a piece, you have to practice. And that involves, like, if I can give you something to think about when you need to um, kind of solve a problem. Obviously, practicing is about solving a problem. Let's say you have a problem with the intonation of a passage, right? <laughs> Let's say you have a little bit of intonation in this, in this passage. Um, so the first step, recognizing what the problem is, right? And then the second step, very important, is to go small. Go right to where the problem is and make a little unit of that, right? Often we play out of tune when we shift, right? I can tell you, the day of a concert, for me, I go through the entire repertoire of the concert and I practice all my shifts. Because I know if I play out of tune, that's where it's going to be, right? It's the nature of the violin. So practicing the intonation of your shifts is so important. So that you're teaching your hand really the feel of where to go on the violin. So can I hear... Um, Maybe that, that passage, there was one a little bit, oops, I'm in the wrong piece all of a sudden. Sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness, what happened? Um, there was one on the second page that's maybe more difficult. Okay. So can, can you start that? Uh, maybe the scale. And I'll need to do that much and then just think of your intonation, right? Okay, so can you talk to me about where you would need to solve the problem? Just using your ear, like letting the notes go into your ear, you, you'll find it right away. Okay, so that's the first step, right? It, you've identified the spot. So you practice that to make it nice and secure, to make sure your ear is leading you, leading your fingers to the right place, okay? So you would do that. Then you put that into a little bit more context. So what would that look like at this point? You would practice. Right? And then you would enlarge the context. You're still practicing. So that it usually involves quite a bit of repetition. Sometimes it involves slow, slowing down the tempo, but not necessarily. That's not the only way to practice, right? Sometimes you need to Maybe do actually faster to make sure that your ear is still being the guide of your intonation. Could I hear that slowly? Okay, now tell me two notes were out of tune, right? Do you, do you, that one was, yeah, quite sharp. 
but the B flat was also too high. Okay, so right now you're discovering something that you probably knew, right? But that you ignored in your practicing because you didn't really practice so much as play. And you know, practicing involves like, it's almost like self-torture, right? Because we have to look at ourselves and say like, bad me, bad me all the time. It's very hard on our ego. But if you, if you leave your ego out of it and just buckle down and you're practicing, then it's just fantastic because the result is so instant, you know? I mean, not all the time, but when you're practicing, you get lots of results, lots faster than when you're just playing over and over. I mean, playing also teaches you a piece. You can learn a piece like that, but it's not the same process and it's not as secure in the end. So I think if I could encourage you to practice a lot more than you play, it would be great. So now we've identified the intonation. Can you do it um, one more time in that same tempo? And just keep your ear really open to the process. Okay, could be better. <laughs> well, that was really almost perfect. I still find your C's quite high. But with the A, you make sure you don't start too high. Almost. <laughs> ah, fantastic. Now do it one more time. It's so much better, so much better already. So now you, you could practice it with adding some speed elements. So you could play, right? So that your fingers are not given all that time to think where they go, that they develop the instinct. Okay, so you just found out something really important about your B flat right right now, right? That it just wants to go too high. So do it again. Yeah, the C is still too high. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So y y you see what I mean, right? Like with, y you know, sitting down five minutes on this passage, it would be so much better than it is right now just by doing that. But by not practicing, you kind of encourage a kind of intonation that's a little bit iffy, I call it, you know, where it's not really in the pocket. And it's really important. Intonation, we get no brownie points for it. Like nobody says, goes to your concert and says, I really enjoyed your intonation. <laughs> they, they're just not going to say that. We're assumed to play in tune, you know, and pianists, don't have this problem. It's just our, our thing, you know, for string players. It's so important. So should we try from the beginning? Um, I, I hear that you're playing some shapes. It's nice, like when you play. But I, I'd like to encourage you to do a little bit more. For instance. Right? And then we have, now to me, these are not, these are, it's, it's a pattern, a rhythmic pattern, but the second one has higher notes, therefore has a little bit more, the shape is a little bigger. So it, you would maybe, right? There's so much um, shaping that you can do in that, right? Should we start from there, from yeah. the, the violin solo part? Okay, 
So you try to shape it so that the D is a little bit higher than your C. Right? Yeah, a little more on the D. Yeah, good. Let's try with the piano from there so that you can feel the... That's uh, letter A, right? Uh, it's uh, it's solo after the introduction. The first, the first solo, violin solo. Right? <laughs> Can you find where she has? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Let's just start from the beginning. Let's oh. see if we can um, get you to experience a little bit more of the shapes, okay? For me, the A is, even though it's in minor, it's a little bit kind of glorious. The F is a little bit, a little bit sadder, right? Maybe. Right, so try to reflect that and then. Right. We want to lead to that C, right? They have a gesture of of moving the notes all the way to the C. Okay, so can you try not to hit the bow on that, but be a little, a little softer on the, on the F, a softer attack, I mean, right? But I would love to hear. Instead of. I know you can do it. Can you do it by yourself first thing? Yeah, and, and use your body to, to help you feel the music. Yeah, like just have the, the motion of the gesture, right? So that you're. You can just feel it better if, if you let yourself move with it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. now now let's just look at some intonation is there one in particular one place where you think you could work in the same way we did before to make the intonation better mm -hmm. right I'm thinking right That was already better because you're listening now better, right? Can you do that from the F sharp? Good, good. And now keep going. Okay, so be, be careful. Can we hear the, the, all the eighth notes? Yeah, so 
you know, intonation is not there to drive you crazy and just like think like, oh my God, I can't play in tune. It's, it's a matter of opening your ear to the fact that it guides your fingers and not the other way around, okay? So that you really let your ear be the guide and then it's so much easier to play in tune, right? Can you do those six notes? Yeah, so from, from here. Okay, that, that's not quite in tune. Good, now. So can you tell me which note was not in tune there? Yes, excellent. So knowing that is, you know, half the battle. Next time you're going to just be aware of it, right? And then if you're, if you were practicing and not in front of all these people, you could do very, very small units, right? To, to make sure you're intent. So, right? And then you can even go then to and still check if your intonation has been learned by your fingers, right? But well, why don't you do, let's see what state it's in now. Good. Ah, that's so much better. Now let's start back to the eighth notes and see what happens. Okay, and be careful. Yeah, okay. So are you standing there just thinking, oh my God, like, do do I really have to do all that? <laughs> Are you, do you feel overwhelmed by the idea of practicing intonation like that? Um, no. no, excellent. <laughs> I mean, you could, because it is a little bit overwhelming, but it's also a habit that you can form, that that's how you practice. You just get your fingers a little bit more organized in recognizing, you know, like this is like a, a map right and you have to know all the countries on there your fingers have to know where they're going when and the size of intervals and the feel of the you know all that so in this case you know you, the, your semitone sometimes are a little bit um, not quite close enough good excellent excellent great okay so Again, I have to repeat, like, it's not quite enough to just do it slow, the intonation, right? You have to then put it in that context because it's often the context that makes us play out of tune. So um, you, you then have to do more little exercises around that make it, it playing rhythms really help, right? <laughs> You could play it faster, just so that your ear is, is still working when you play fast and that your fingers are learning really where they go. Can you try it quickly? Slur like that. And one more time. So it's not quite in tune with the G, G right? Yeah, you can keep doing it. And keep, keep doing it quickly. Ah, yeah, you adjusted the F sharp, right? Your ear is able to pick out so much, so many tiny details. You have to let it do that. If you've been lucky enough to be given a good ear, you know, it's a, it's a gift. Like, we, we didn't do anything to deserve that. We just got it. Okay. Um, let's see if we could... 
fine. Um, I find that when you have some pianos, you're playing a little bit the same dynamic as your forte. So um, can we try, I mean, that's at letter B, right? And Right, that should be a different quality with the piano. Okay, good, so make sure your rhythm is, uh, is accurate, right? Yeah, it's a little bit too fast. Right, so... They're not just grace notes, they're, they're rhythmic, right? Six, uh, 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Okay, so do you know where we are right now? Yeah, so why don't we start there, um, right on that letter B that I have. Do, do you have a letter B there? Um, that's the bar of B for me, but no matter. Okay. found another spot, right, for intonation. You know what it is. You just have to go home and sort it all out, right? And then your performance will be so much shinier when it's really good intonation, you know, it's just, it's, uh, it's like the clarity in a painting, right? Okay, so how about, um, I, I don't know, here, like, you know, I would love to hear you do the, so that we have, that we really feel the line. Can you try that? shapes if you use your bow a little bit differently right you're you're at this moment just really playing those all with the same amount of bow so you could really regulate that I mean you're the boss of your bow yes <laughs> nobody else so can you try it right there so so that your D is a sm slower bow And now we have, right, it's not, they're not all equal, those notes, right? There's a descending shape, right? Yeah, yeah, good. Now how about, can I hear it there? What I, what I mean that we hear growing, right? So that means you have to use your bow a, a little bit different. Okay, <laughs> let's try it one, one last time. Yes, yes, for sure, good. And then C major, just you could be very shiny with that. Okay, thank you, great. Um. Okay.
how are you? Okay, Isaac. Hi, Isaac, how are you? Great, thank you. Right. Are we okay to start? Oh, you get a big camera. <laughs> Did you tune to the piano? tuned either one. Okay, great. Okay, so my name is Isaac Lomas and I'm going to be playing um, Hold Down from Rodeo by Aaron Pope.
Thank you. That sounds great. I think we need a, a good something American happening these days. <laughs> good American music. So, um, for my money, I would... Uh, right? That note would be long because it's, it's yeah. the... Your body bends like that, right? Like... Dum -dee -dum -dee -dum. So, I, I think when you have it, I guess it's... Um, right, that all those sportsandos, I, I would play full length on, on, on that, not staccato. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, at the beginning, obviously, the E flat, right? Mm -hmm. The E flat is the really subversive note in there, also the C sharp, right? So make sure this is very, very much that you really mean it, <laughs> right? That you're, in, that you really play the accents on that. Can you try from the beginning? Yeah, yeah. I think you, even the first one is not enough, right? You don't have to to worry too much about, you know, like superb sound quality here. He wants you to play country style oh. fiddle, which I mean, you could even <laughs> get your violin down. But um, you know what I mean? It's the the rhythm of this piece is almost more important than the notes, right? Like it's really in the rhythm that we feel the. Like if you can have the image of. You know, like the workers been working all day. They finally at, are back at the barn. They can let it all go, right? They need some some kind of um, outlet for like, having worked physically worked all day. So just really make sure that rhythmically you you really um, look at what what he's written in terms of where the accents are. Okay, so. And don't give up, right? So you have... So the accents are often just in the wrong place, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to really emphasize that. So... It's really almost more important than the notes. Should we play the whole opening? Okay. Yeah, so uh, already you're a little bit tender with that. <laughs> and right? you have to just like, really kind of engage the string and have a little zinc to your arm. Okay. We, could, we could play with you. It's, helps, I think. Okay, okay, good. So I, I wonder, maybe it would be a little difficult to do this right now, but the, Next time that you get together, that you're rehearsing, you could try to just play the accented notes, right? It's, it's hard to do, <laughs> but it would give you the idea of, of what the frame of, of them is, right? So, <laughs> we have like, da -da -dum, so. so there's, there's really a, something interesting going on there with the accents that right now I'm not quite hearing, especially if you want, right? You have to make sure you don't accent the downbeat there, right? And so on, okay? Okay. Now let's get to um, the next part, which I thought you played really well. Um, when you have the pizzicatos like, Right, that little jazzy one, 
really just make sure it's very, that you feel it completely in your body, that you're not just, you know, counting, but that's the... So. Right, that you're really just giving a jab to someone a little bit, like playing it early to tease them a bit, okay? okay. Should we try the... Good, good. Now you need to make more sound with your pits, right? Like, can, oh my goodness, what's going on? Sorry. Can you try to do... Yeah, so I think what you're doing is you're using your whole arm, and you need to use the lower part of your arm, not so much the high, because it's too cumbersome, right? If you, if you, you do that. So it's kind of like, do you see what's going on? I'm using just this part. Yeah. Yeah, and then you can pitch across this way, right? You can make a little bit more, more sound that way. Ah, it's pretty good. And uh, you don't need to uh, deaden the sound, right? It, I know you have to put down your fingers, but wait till the last minute, man. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, and now... Right, this should be... I know you feel the music. I, I, I can see that. I, I think the, it could be a little bit more amusing, right? So that maybe not so serious, but just a little bit in the middle of the bow. Can, do you want to try that? Yeah, yeah. Okay, now so not try. Frog. What, what's that? So not right up by the frog. Well, I mean, you could down. play. I suppose there are different ways to play it, but. Um, I'm thinking right now it sounds a little bit staccato, like violin staccato, where we need fiddle staccato, right? So it can be a little bit more like that. Yeah. I mean, if your teacher just screams at me, that's fine. <laughs> you can go back to, but um, for me, I think that would be an interesting, uh, it's, so, it's so funny. I mean, the piano part is so funny there, right? Like you want to reflect that a little bit. Do you want to start just, uh, Couple bars before, yeah. Sorry, um, yeah. one just really again go for the hum humor aspect right it, it's a it's a little bit of a joke um, I know I'm making you uh, uh, it's difficult with your rhythm because now you're you know you're trying to play it in the middle but um, you could just be a little bit right it's right there so make it just a little bit inside this this box here. You, you've seen fiddlers play, right? They, they're just really close to the body, like they, they don't do that thing that we do. I right? think like it's, it's more about really grinding the sound in and the foot tapping, you know, gives it that, that aspect as well. So just... Right, so you're right there. Your bow should be right there. Good, that's great. And now the piano one, what would it sound like? Yeah, it could be a little softer. Nice. Yeah, I, you want somebody to laugh at your performance when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> because then your job is done. It's funny. I mean, you know what I mean? I think you're the first person who's told me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
yeah, usually it's not good when people laugh at our concerts. Okay, um, so then the next section... You have those three accents there at the end, right? So the, I didn't really hear that. Just really grind it out. Okay, yeah. good, good. Isaac, I'm not sure about your E flat. It has to. It has to sound like that. And right now, it sounds too nice. You have to really make it super close to the D. Okay. Yeah, it's a little too high. Like that, or yeah, that? yeah, it, it's just it, the rub is what we're going for, right? Um, I mean, as early as Bach, they were using the, this uh, idea of the rub of the, of the major seventh or the semitone to create a, that tension. So, he, well, it, I mean, it's interesting with when we have. Semitone, the the vibrations are greatest the closer they are, right? Like I can even feel it in my thumb; it's going. But if you play your B flat a little comfortably higher, it starts to vibrate less. Right? So you really want the. Playing Bach, like you want that rub, so it's uh, important not to play your E flat too high because then we miss the we miss that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Now, can you play? Can you try? It's a foot stomping thing. Don't be too nice about it, right? It's not a like a Beethoven sfortando even. It's it's more it's a little bit more aggressive than that. Right? Accents in the next part, right? So you have the uh, again. Try it. Uh, really, almost all accents and nothing on the other notes, just to to get the feel of the the rhythmic uh, line, right? So let's try to really hear that. Now you have to play forte, of course, but we need that structure of the accents. Can you can you play together? Do you want to start here? Okay. Yeah, you just you do the repeat as you as you would. Yeah. Okay. Pretty sure you learn. You learn to do that. So you're accenting the D, but it's the E flat, right? Mm. So I, I see you revert to that now. That it just tells me that that's how you thought of it. But uh, it's important to correct that, right? So that we we get uh, that rub we were talking about, and um, and react to the piano, right? Because he has accents where you don't, and you, your response should be a little bit like, what are you doing? Like, 
you know, so that you have a real conversation about about these warring kind of accents. Okay, should we do from there? <laughs> scared of those big shifts, right? Um, there's only one safety thing, and then that's practicing the shift. You, you know that, I know. But in this piece, you need not be scared, because if you miss it, you know, like, it's fine. And what's not fine is to play, to play soft, because that's not the spirit of the thing, right? So the intonation, you know, like, you just practice it to make sure you're there but try to throw your fear out the window for that because it just doesn't belong in this passage, right? It, it just, uh, so. We have that and then, oh, it's getting there, right? So, so can you just play that? And then you do it a few times and then you won't be scared of it, right? Yeah, so you're in fourth position, I think. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but can you lift your bow? Trying to practice, yeah, I think I've practiced it more as um, just going through those two lines. I know, uh, I know. Yeah. So that's, the, there you are. Like, that's the natural tendency is to play. We like playing the violin so much more than practicing. Mm -hmm. And you have to fight that tendency because practicing will get you there so much faster. Um, there's... <laughs> Like you, you really haven't quite figured out even the distance right now. Um, you could do that a million times, right? Okay. And then when you play through, it might still be out of tune. Mm -hmm. And then you don't go, oh God, all that practicing. It's just the process, right? Like you just go back to practicing and then putting it together and gradually, you, you're, you will have taught your hand where that note is. Can we do a little bit of it right now? So do, just do that. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, good, good. OK, so right now, you're, you're jumping with closing your eyes like that, right? You need to uh, actually feel the distance. Like you need to be a little logical about it. Uh, so where are you? Fourth position. I mean. It's two positions higher, right? So you want to try that? So just D on one. On one, on first finger, you're in, you're in fourth position. First finger, and then D on three, on on your E string, right? This so D here. Oh, okay. So that's the same position as your D down there. That's where you're coming from, mm -hmm. and you're going to that. Yeah. Okay, right. so the, do you speak French at all? Not really, no. No. 
we have a word in French. It's just, you know, like from the Le Petit Prince, like he, he's trying to tame the, the creature. And I often feel like apprivoiser is the word we use in French. And there's no, tame is not quite right in English somehow, but you need to tame your violin sometimes or tame the, the difficulty. Because sometimes it's like, ah, oh my goodness, that's so hard, you know? And so you have to sit down and make it not hard. Like just sometimes you need some logic or sometimes you need just rote practicing. Doesn't matter what it is, but you can always tame the difficulty. Uh, almost always. <laughs> so this is part of that process, right? Now when you're at your concert and you, you have to go get it, Yes, I agree. No matter how t much you've tamed the thing, there's still a little element of, yikes, I hope I get it. But that's fine. But the, the fear is not so good. It's, it's more like the, you need to develop being bold rather than feeling the fear, right? So you just at home practice that. Make sure you use the right fingering, right? One, one, three, three. <laughs> Right? Yes, yeah, yes. Um, and then, then you'll, you'll feel like what that shift involves. Okay? Um, okay, so uh, let's go to, oh, are we? Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, that subversive second eighth note again. Oh, I even broke a hair. Let's see you break a hair on that note. <laughs> A piano here, right? I think it could be quite, uh, you know, a little bit m more feminine almost. Uh. Have you ever seen Natalie McMaster play? We had a, we had a Taiwan um, meeting with her once. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness, she's so amazing. Like, she would when she plays something like that, you know, she really just uses the, she's so good with the character of, so you have to find the. Right, all that is quite stomping, foot stomping, and then. Right. And so on. Um, and then when you got to the end, just make sure you, that you, again. Uh, all these notes that you yeah. really can be, uh, to play them just as loud as the others, right? That you get to. And then, uh, right? So that, that needs, um, a little bit more fire. Okay, how do you get to your harmonic? I see. Yeah. Yeah, it's an E, right? You want to do it somewhere else than up there? It would be here. But then you have, you have to go up anyway for the C sharp. So I... My copy has an 8 VA in it. Oh, okay, I see what you're doing. So, uh, can you try? You could do that. Go, yeah, go, go to one on the harmonics. So. 
the next turn. Go to one, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that might work. Okay. Right? Okay, I guess we're out of time. It's great to hear you. Thank you. Marie? Yeah? I have a question. Okay. Uh, Salma would like to know what the most important violin technique is for playing country music. Oh, man. That's a tough one. Uh, I mean, I, I am not a country music uh, expert by any means. Well, I can only answer that what I'm fascinated by in country fiddlers is the speed at which they do like, they do these little things that no classical player can can really do it with the right sound like they just uh, I I'm very uh, intrigued by that because it's really something I can't do it's almost something you have to be born with you know but um, but of course they uh, they have in terms of our own technique, they have the best contact with the string that you could possibly have. So it's a, it's a good technique in a way to, uh, as a base for us, like just to, to be able to really connect with, with the string. down while I listen to you. My name is Katerina and I am playing Meditation from Thais by Matt.
such exquisite music, isn't it? So um, do you know what's going on in Thais's mind when... I mean, this is a long time in an opera to, for, for it to not be, have any singing and all that. Do you, do you know what, what is going on with her? No. <laughs> well, um, it's, it's pretty serious business. She has to choose between a man that she loves, that, who loves her, who is, um, she's refused him, uh, you know, over and over again, but she's, she's still not sure, because she does love him, between him and the convent and becoming a nun. <laughs> so it's kind of a tragic thing to have to decide, and it's, she, in a way, needs that kind of music to be really, truly getting back to her feelings and getting to the very essence of her. So that's why I think Massenet wrote this rather long piece and so that she can, um, you know, come to the right decision for herself. So that something, <coughs> excuse me, something you have to think about in your sound production, right? So that you're... Right, so that your sound really just creates something, just the sound. The music, of course, creates something beautiful, but your sound has to be really, really participating in just um, making that moment special, okay? And I just hear you play the, the opening and just concentrate on your sound being very pure and very full of spinning, right? So if you, if you listen to this kind of sound, right, that has no spinning because I'm compressing the sound and pulling it out, compressed, right? So what you have to do is take the sound and pull it out in a free way so that it can start to ring. I know it's kind of complicated concept, but I know you could do it if you, if you think about, if you let your ear um, try to find that sound, right? So then, so it's free. And that your vibrato helps. I mean, without vibrato, it still can spin. Right, it's not, it's not that, right? And then the vibrato helps to just uh, send it a, yet a, a, another layer of beauty, okay? That's very nice. It's a little too soft, but that was really lovely. And, uh, right? So you have to sustain this, this phrase all the way to, to the top. <laughs> so, I, f I feel you're playing, and you're kind of thinking, uh, I'm not sure what to do here. But it, it... Right, so you, it, uh, who was it we were talking to? Was it Teresa before, or Ariana? I can't remember, but about fighting the natural decay of the bow, yeah? Can you just do those three notes? Just try to get your bow to sustain at the tip, right? Okay, you could try a little more developing the sound through the bow. Okay, yeah, and then can you, as you do that, can you feel that your arm is just free to do that? If you didn't have a bow in it that had to be on a violin, it would keep going and do that. Can you feel that? Can you put your arm out there? Yes, that feeling, isn't it good? Like when you have that feeling, you're like, you know, we, we learned that like, mommy, mommy. 
me when we're little. Like it's so natural, this feeling. So that's what you need to feel with your arm as, as you learn. So the end feeling right now that it could just go on forever, even though it can't, but just because it's free to do that, okay? You want to play with her? Now stay relaxed with your hand, both hands. Beautiful sound. If we weren't in a pandemic right now, I'd be over there <laughs> getting your arm up, you know, because it's very close to your body. Uh, so. I'd love to see you experience the, you're, you're in high school, right? You, you've done anatomy in those kinds of classes, you know, the skeleton, you know what's going on there, right? There's a ball and a socket. <laughs> So I would love for you to feel what's going on when, when you're using the upper part of your arm. Right now you just use the lower part, right? So it, then it sounds small. If I do that, right? So I'm going, I'm just using the lower part of my arm. But if I use the, uh, it's totally different, right? So, when, you know, my teacher in uh, in university, <laughs> he was a little bit mean sometimes, but sometimes uh, you learn that way. But he would just, he wouldn't tell you he was going to do that, but you'd be getting ready to do an up bow and he just hit you on the elbow like boom, like that and it's just it's super unpleasant but you do learn you know from it's like when you stub your toe you learn to to not walk into the piano or whatever so he would uh, you know and it would make you do that but it was clever in a way because that's how that's what I mean I I would be doing that to you right now if I could. So can you try just doing an, a bow? And try to feel like, just start with your arm out here. Really out, like this part of your arm, not close to your body, but out. And then feel the, the, the socket and the ball in there as you push the bow. Uh, you probably didn't feel it, right? You have to actually do this. Can you, can you go hit your forehead? Ah, now you felt it, yes? Can you go all the way to your forehead? Yes, do you feel it? Do it again. Ah, that thing, okay? That's violin playing. Can you try it on a nub bow? Oh, you didn't go for your forehead. Then. If you keep going, you would be there. Right? And keep going until you, until you make contact. Yes. <laughs> Try it again. Yeah, just you're, you have to use this part of your arm, not just this part. Like, do you, can you feel the difference? Go like this, right? And then go like this. Yeah, my God, your sound's already better even though you're not playing. <laughs> Can you try it on the violin? Push, push, push. Yeah. Like, actually push your own arm. <laughs> ah, yes, 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 yes. Now do it all the way. That, that B natural there is one of the saddest notes in, in this piece. It's like, it's so almost giving up, it, you know? So, I 
I think it would be nice if you did it in position, first of all, because it, it's hard, like, uh, even on the, the best of violins, that note is not great, right? So. Can, can I hear the, the beginning one more time? Do you want to try the fingering? It's just like third position, right? Oh, yeah. Now, make sure you're loose and relaxed. And you just have a little tenderness for that note, right? In your vibrato, it needs to be reflected in your vibrato, right? Like just really, whoa, 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 whoa. Can you start right there then? That's pretty. Yeah, keep going. through before it, it, this is chamber music yes I mean it's orchestral music but in this case it's chamber music and you have to give her time to finish that arpeggio because it has some different note changes in there so can you play the last uh, right so you have to save your bow a little bit can you play from the E right and then you come together but you, you, she needs the room so you need to save the ball a little bit just from there what is your arm doing down there yeah again nice and tall stand tall yeah Sometimes wonder how you could have a little more juice, like when you need to play more intensely. You seem to not quite be aware yet you're holding a bow in your hand and you have access to a number of things. Do you know what they are? Like, how do we play louder? Um, you move your bow fast. Okay, <laughs> that's, you can move your bow faster. You can apply a little bit more pressure. You can have more contact, more of the hair contact with the string, and you can be closer to the bridge. That's a lot of stuff that can help you play loud or play bigger, right? So, uh, right here. So 
you need to, to be much more intense there, right? Things are heating up a little bit. So can you show me that? Uh, can you just do that th that much and see if you could figure out how to get more sound? Okay, so let's do it one more time. Just the, those four notes from the C natural. Now, get in into the into the string a bit more. You, you need to just get more um, more pressure in there, and and push the bow. Okay. Okay, so I hear this, right? And I want to hear, I don't know, it's not the same, right? So, like, I don't know, what, what could you do? Can I hear the sound? Oh, that's tiny still. Okay, you're getting there, you're getting there. Okay, now you're still a little bit, like, you know, away from your violin, you need to, like, you need to do this, right, and pull it out. Can you feel that? Like, you stand tall and you, you use, like, part, part of it is the, what is that called? <laughs> Gravity. And you go against it. You, you create the, the resistance, right? So, can you try? Okay, so uh, watch your intonation also. So uh, there's a few intonation places in there that you have to uh, look at, right? Um, in the case of a melodic line like that, you can help having a pianist with you to really try to settle the intonation. Um, can we try from... Can you just try from that, like just play the notes just for the pitch, listening to the piano, and um, y you give me a, a report back after, okay? What is your fingering? Your 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 four on the top, right? I, I I I'm not sure what your fingering is. Oh, that's a four. Then a two. Yeah. And then what? A two. Like that? Yeah. Okay. So let's hear that. Okay, now let's do it one more time. Just so that e all the pitches are very clear in your ear. Okay, that, that's not a good D sharp, right? A little bit flat. Oops. Yes. <laughs> You know, intervals, like, to, for intonation, sometimes you need to think in terms of intervals. And an interval is like a, a real entity. Like it's, a minor third is, like it has a length to it. It's aural, like A-U-R-A-L, but it still has that length, right? You have to really feel that in, in your ear. Just try to feel the length of the interval. Okay, one more time, so. Good, and then keep going. 
Okay, so we have a little trouble here, right? Is that what you... Two? Okay, can you do those pitches? Okay, that feel the feel the the whole tone. Like feel that as a how big it is. You just do a little bit flat on the G. Yeah, it does not feel good like when you're right there, right? the whole piece, right? To really settle, teach your hand where those pitches are. And then what are you going to do over here? Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Just, you know, to remember, just hit your forehead a few times before. <laughs> it, like, hit is too strong, but go over your forehead. You can't help but feel the motion that you need to, to do to play the violin when you do that. You can't get that far because there's no violin up there. But that's the, the feel of it, okay? Great, thank you. Thank you. So Maria, I have a couple of uh, questions. Great. Uh, Debbie wants to know how old you were when you started playing, and she also wants to know how long you've been the concert master with the COC. Ah, does she want to know how old I am now? <laughs> Dear, um, I was unusually old when I started. I was 10, almost 11, which is um, a little bit more unusual than uh, normal. Um, and I just, honestly, I picked up the violin because I had a friend who started the violin and I just thought, well, that sounds cool. I mean, I'm from a family of musicians, but I played piano and suddenly with the violin, it was the right thing somehow. And then I... Um, I was named concertmaster, my job now at the opera, officially in um, 1992. <laughs> so a long time, it's nearly 30 years. I mean, I mean, I've been there 30 years because I did play two, for two years before I officially got the job. So it's, it's incredible to have witnessed what our company was 30 years ago to what it is today and we had some tragedies and some incredibly wonderful things and it's just I feel really blessed to have been part of it all. It's amazing. Um, we we have not been together since since the end of February, but uh, we do have a concert that's still in the books for uh, December at Kerner Hall in Toronto. And uh, right now it looks like that will go ahead as a streamed concert, but um, it's it's actually still, still on. And it's, uh, of course, not the full orchestra. It will be a reduced orchestra we're doing a Beethoven symphony to because it's still the the Beethoven year um, year of his 350th birthday and then we'll do some arias with with singers so first time in December <laughs> since February quite incredible but we have a few little chamber concerts at the uh, art gallery of Ontario in January that that kind of thing. But opera will probably be the last to recover from uh, the pandemic just due to the the nature of what they do on stage and also the pit, we're all always so close. And so we, you know, we try not to uh, think too much of that <laughs> just day by day right now. Thanks for your question though.
Yeah, well, um, I just think for my own students, I know that I do the best by them when I teach them to practice. And so we did that a little bit, I think, with everybody. But for me, there's no, um, no better advice than um, find out ways to practice. And I, I find that often we get stuck on playing something slowly until it gets better. And that is just one of a hundred ways there are to, to practice. So um, learning to, to, to um, diagnose the problem. So you're the doctor, the nurse, and the recovering room all at once when you're practicing. So the, identifying the problem is often um, something that I find not just students, but all of us musicians, we've, we have a hard time with that. We, we want to sound good, so we're very good at not listening sometimes. To, so keeping that ear open when in the practicing process, and then um, just going for the very the center of the issue that we have, and then building around that, putting it in context, and not not getting bummed out if it didn't work, because it's, it is a long process sometimes. In other times, it's not at all long, right? Like in the case of, was it um, Ariana, I think? Um, she got her intonation better so quickly just from being more attentive to it. So I think for all students, this intonation is not negotiable. It just has to be the focus of our practicing from uh, day one. And it, I don't know if they actually believe me, but I mean, I practice my intonation, you know, at, I'm almost 60 years old and I'm still practicing my intonation. It, it will never stop. It's, it's something that, uh, that just needs to, to be there. I don't know also if anyone, anyone has experienced not playing for a few days even. Um, if you stop playing for five days, you come back and that's the first thing that goes is the intonation. It's, you lose that very, very fine um, it, um, control of it that you, you build so hard for. So it's... Uh, I think that's my advice for today. <laughs> Thank you so much, though. I thought I enjoyed it, like the variety of, of uh, players and of pieces. And everyone was super well prepared. It's always so nice like when, you, when you hear violin students just have an intent to want to sound good. It's great. We can work with that. OK, more questions? Are we we're all done? Great. Uh, Marie, Marie, thank, thank you, you very much, much for uh, taking, uh, taking the time, the time today, today to share your expertise, expertise with us. It has been excellent. Uh, I, would I would also like, like to thank our production crew who helped to put this on and, and share it with our virtual, virtual audience. audience. Um, thank, thank you, Peter Hanmore and Nick Gilroy. Um, to, to our, our virtual, virtual audience, audience, I would invite, invite you to um, Join, Join us for our, our next, next virtual, virtual event, event, which is our, our festive, festive virtual, virtual concert, concert on December the 20th, and then, then the two, the two other master, master classes in our master class series, which, which will be in February and April. April. So, so thank, thank you for, you for leading, leading us, us off in, in our, our season. season. Yes, I was glad to be here. Thank you.